Repetitive code is super annoying, but sometimes it just can't be helped. You know, if you want to use a for loop or if you want to create a function, then you have to use a certain syntax, otherwise R will complain. And if you want to define, say, five functions, then you will have to use the function keyword like five times. And you will also have to type out the things like the curly brackets and the arrow to define the function name. And all of that is a bit tedious because it's really repetitive. Thankfully, R Studio has snippets that make your life a little bit easier. Basically, a snippet is just a skeleton of, say, a function so that you can type out only the things that you really need for this particular function. For example, if you use the function snippet, then you have a skeleton of the function and you just have to fill in the name, the arguments, and the body of the function, basically the code that it executes. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use snippets in RStudio and how to create your own snippets so that you can modify it for the code that you use all the time. So with that said, let's dive into RStudio. In my quarto file, I have a function that looks like this. It's nothing fancy, it's just a function that adds numbers. So that's why it's called add numbers. It takes two arguments, x and y, should be vectors, and then they will be added. And one way to create such a function would be to just type out these things. Let's call this add numbers and then write function x, y, and then do a curly bracket and do x plus y, and then you're done with that. So that is one way to create a function. But one thing I like to do is to not write all of the stuff manually. Really this function tag and these curly brackets, they are part of any function declaration, right? So why not use a skeleton that has all of the parts and then I just stick in the parts that I want to change, like the name of the function, the arguments that I need, and uh, basically the core of the function. And the cool thing is that RStudio can do that. For example, if I write out fun, then it already asks me if I want to use a snippet here. And I can use the fun snippet. It's just like with any auto completion, I can activate it with tab. And then you see that it throws the skeleton for me and I can modify the things like name variables. So let's just write out the things that I have to write out anyway. So add numbers. And then I can press tab to jump to the variables. And then I can just put an XY here. And if I press tab again, then I jump into the function and I could put in the code that I need. So that's X plus Y here. And then I could navigate with the things that I usually do, like, I don't know, navigate out of this with the arrows and do some something, something here, whatever. The point is that the snippet made it really easy for me to reuse this function part. And there are more snippets. For example, there's the for snippet. You can see here, there's the for snippet. And then it will throw in the skeleton for a for loop for you. And then you could say something like k in the numbers 1 through 10. And then you could do something here again. Okay, so that's how snippet works. And the nice thing is that you can navigate back and forth through the arguments of the snippets or the parts of the snippets by using tab and shift tab. Let me demonstrate this with the function. Let's say I want to do add numbers again, and then I do X and Y, and then I realize hmm, maybe I want to change the name of the function after all. So I press shift and tab, and this jumps back to the name again. So I can do a new name here. And in this case, I could do something like add to numbers, numbers, and then I can press tab again to jump to the arguments again. And then when I press tab again, I jump into the function and then the snippet is complete. You see there's not this kind of overlay that was over the name and over the argument. And I can't use tab anymore to jump back and forth. If I press tab now, I just do an indent. And if I press shift tab, I unindent this. So that's pretty cool. And it can save you a lot of work. For example, if you're into shiny, then there is a shiny snippet that will for example, throw your complete app skeleton. That way you have a shiny app. Or if you need a shiny module, you could do that too. Basically, you can throw all kinds of code skeletons using snippets. And in the case of the shiny module snippet, it's actually really convenient because you can do two names at once. See how I have multiple cursors now? So I could write this into template underscore UI and it will also get the template underscore server. And by pressing tab, I jump into the tag list here. If you have no clue what shiny is, it doesn't matter at all. The point here is just that you can use these snippets to throw a lot of code. And it's also helpful with these kind of naming conventions. For example, with the shiny module, you can name both the server and the UI at the same time. Okay, so let's get rid of all of this part here and figure out how we can actually find out what snippets they are. And the way to do that is to go to tools and then you can find the edit code snippets menu. 
And in here you find all of the snippets that are available in different contexts. For example, you could also use snippets in Markdown. We'll cover that in a second. For now, let us talk about the R snippets. If we scroll down a little bit, we will actually see that here is the snippet for fun. And here's the snippet for the for loop. And you can see that the naming convention is always the same. It is the keyword snippet followed by an empty space, followed by the name of the snippet. And then it is a line break and then you have it indented at the same height. This part is important with snippets. You really have to be careful that everything is indented like this. Of course, you can have other indents here too. See how there is another indentation here. But the point is you cannot have this stuff at the beginning of the line because the snippet syntax enforces that you have to write it this way. And then if we remember how we just use the fun snippet, we notice that first in the skeleton, let me just throw this in here again. Let's just write fun. Then you see here it's name, variables, and then in here in the core, there's nothing. Let's have a look how the snippet for that looks so that we compare this. So here's the fun snippet. And that's what you see here. The first thing that we can modify is the name. So it is dollar, this curly bracket here, and then it says one colon and the name. And this name here, this is the part that I see in the snippet. And the same thing for the second argument is true. Here I see that I have number two here. And then what I see in my snippet is the variables here. And finally, the last thing that I see here then is this dollar zero. And this is where my snippet ends. Once I hit tab often enough until I land in this position, then the snippet is completed. So really, this is how you can create your own snippet. Just go down to the end of this thing here. And in here, I have actually already created two new snippets. I use those in the blog post for this video. You can find the use of these snippets and all of the code in the corresponding blog post to this video. But for this video, why not create a new one? Let's do snippet here and call this video snip, then I do a line break and I do an indent. And then let's just do something. I don't know. I need a vector that throws me the numbers five and 10. Why I need that? I don't know. It's just for the sake of this video. Actually, it's kind of a dumb one. Let's make it so that we have at least one argument here. Let's do something like value one. And the second one is always a 10. And here you see that I didn't use the dollar zero thing. Let's just check out what happens if we do it like this. So I call this video snip and you see the snippet is available. The code is thrown and it shows me value one and I can now replace this with some number. And then if I press tab, I immediately jump out of the whole snippet, which is kind of cool. If you don't put in a zero, it will just jump to the end. So that way you can code something, video snippet, do some number here and then press tab again and continue coding next. It's a really dumb use cases that we have here, but the principle is always the same. Now, one thing you have to be careful with is that, and this is something I noticed when I created these two snippets, I simply copy and pasted this code here into this from my portal file. And then it can happen that what you have here looks like you used a tab, like a tab here, but it's in fact just white space. For example, if I would use two white spaces here instead of the tab, it will show me that this isn't the same thing as this. And if you ignore this, then this complete snippet will not work. So that's why it's important to always make sure that you're using either only tabs or only white spaces to do the indentations here. Just make sure that you are aware of that. But once you keep that in mind, you're pretty much good to go and create your own snippets. Also, if you're curious with the shiny module snippet, the way it did this multiple cursor thing is that it just reused the same name and same number for this variable that you use in your snippet. Now I have said that you can also use snippets in other contexts like in Markdown, just like in a Quarto file. Quarto is a special case of Markdown. So you should be able to use all of this. And there are some inbuilt snippets like using the link snippet here. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this here is the markdown code for putting a hyperlink into a text. So let's try to use this one. Right now it looks like it is only the opening brackets. So let's have a look. Let's place this outside of a code chunk and then do a bracket. And you can see here that auto completion already throws me the closing bracket. So this can feel confusing. We can still use the snippet, but what happens now if I press tab is that I get an indentation. That's not great, so let's undo that. Instead, what you have to do is to press Shift tab. In Markdown, you need to press Shift tab, and then it throws you the Markdown code for using a link to some location. And also the closing bracket is gone now. Let's do that again. 
if I press the opening bracket, it will give me the closing bracket here. That's kind of annoying a bit. But if I then press shift and tap, it will complete the snippet. And then the closing bracket is here in the right position where it's supposed to be. And I can use the label and location here. I cannot do this right now because I've already gone out of the snippet. So let's do it all in once now. So opening bracket, shift, tap, link something here, and then tap to go to some location. And then I put a hyperlink here. I don't have a link right now. So this is why I just put some dummy text in there. And then tap again jumps out of this. So shift tap to activate the snippet in Markdown, but tap to navigate to the next part of the snippet and shift tap to navigate to the previous part of the snippet. And with that, we have covered how to use snippets in our studio. Hope this helps you code a little bit faster by saving you the trouble of having to type out all of the things that you need anyway. Just throw that stuff into a snippet and then you can reuse it whenever you feel like it. As always, you can read up on this stuff via the blog post to this video. We'll put a link to that into the description of this video. And with that said, hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.